So Paul is, is responsible for the content side of things and I'm responsible for everything else. This presentation is going to last um, around about, uh, I would say, um, 45 minutes or so, probably less actually, between 30 and 45 minutes, and then we'll have a, a Q&A session at the end of it. Um, so I'll, what are we going to take you through uh, today? I'll introduce you to um, the wonderful Paul Billiken, who heads up our, uh, our MLI faculty. Um, I'll explain why he's so wonderful and, uh, and talented. Um, we're also going to talk about what exactly the MLI is and um, why it's or how it's beneficial to you. Uh, we are accredited. We've got uh, a number of uh, partnerships with organisations who you will probably have heard of, and we'll take you through those as well. We'll talk about the MLI faculty. Uh, the world-renowned faculty, genuinely world-renowned, and I'll go into detail on that uh, shortly. We'll talk about the candidate profiles, both the professional uh, profile that um, you need to have in order to, to be suitable for the programme, as well as the academic profile. Uh, we'll take you through a breakdown uh, uh, of the syllabus, a detailed breakdown of the syllabus, and then at the end, we'll talk about uh, a little bit about MLI alumni, uh, the study part of the programme for those of you who would prefer to study with somebody uh, and the help desk. And then we'll conclude with an open Q&A session. And that Q&A session can happen during the course of this presentation as well. I think we've got few enough people for, um, for that to be worthwhile. Um, so who is Paul? So Paul heads up our faculty. Um, he's an incredibly uh, bright spark. He's written uh, some books. He's got another book uh, that he's co-written, which is uh, coming out pretty soon, which is going to be published pretty soon. Um, educated at Oxford and Imperial. He's spent 17 years um, in the financial market sector. He started off as a quant. Uh, he then became a quant trader, and then he worked at director level. Um, for various different banks. He is also uh, an academic, so he's also, he's, he teaches maths for computer science at Imperial College, and he's founder of Thalesians. I'm sure you've heard of Thalesians. If you haven't, then it's worth uh, checking them out, because this, this, this is an extraordinary group um, with literally thousands of members. Some of those members are um, uh, are very, very well known. They're, you know, either very well known academics or market practitioners uh, or authors. And he basically came up with this idea, with uh, the idea of having a, a machine learning program that was entirely practical. It's an eight month course. Um, it's part time, so they are evening lectures. They're delivered uh, weekly, and people from all over the world uh, attend these lectures. <coughs> Excuse me. And those eight months are comprised of two levels. You've got level one and level two that are four modules each. Um, prior to the program, you would do the MLI primers, of which there are five, 32 lecture weeks in total. And this really is very, very practical. So th th this is a professional qualification. It's not a university program. It's not a master's program um, or an undergraduate degree. It, it's, it's designed as a professional qualification for those who are working, uh, who are working in this space and for those who want to work in this space. Um, uh, what else? So the there is also a uh, a final exam which i would say is one of the probably the only um if you like uh, theory based aspects there are theory based aspects of the program of course but in terms of invigilation and and testing what you know the final exam um is is kind of theory based whereas the final project is just the perfect conclusion to the program where you literally implement everything you've learned on this program uh, as though you're out in, uh, in, in the working environment. <clears throat> it's an incredible, and you get the choice of what, uh, um, what to focus your final project on. 
Uh, the final exam can be taken from anywhere in the world. So the MLI faculty is um, genuinely um, world renowned. There are, we've got the current quant of the year um, teaching on this program. We've got the rising star in quant finance. Team. I'll take you through some of the names um, shortly, but um, there, there are reasons why they've chosen this program above, above others. They are all specialists in the field of machine learning, data science, and artificial intelligence. Candidates work with hands-on assignments designed to illustrate the algorithms studied and to experience firsthand the practical challenges involved in the design and successful implementation of machine learning models. That really is what this is about in a nutshell. Um, massive emphasis on uh, acquiring knowledge and a skill set that um, that you can use in the outside world. Uh, the highly practical nature of the certificate allows employees to directly use their newly obtained knowledge in the workplace environment. What are the benefits? It, it's a graduate level professional qualification. Um, it has become internationally renowned. Um, so the letters MLI incidentally can also appear after your name on completion of the program. And it's really the letters MLI, that brand um, has become renowned around the world. The vast majority of people who do the program are from around the world rather than just in the UK, for example. Um, and there is a specific commitment towards career development for those who are self-funded through the program. And I'll elaborate on that uh, at the end of the presentation. For those who are sponsored through the program, the program itself is an individual commitment to career development, but insofar as actively helping you uh, on your career path, if you're self-funded, obviously uh, sponsored by a company, we can't help you to move to other organizations. Um, so yeah, it's eight months, lectures streamed over the internet, um, very practical, as I've already mentioned, uh, developed and taught by highly experienced practitioners and academics. Faculty is led by Paul, um, the faculty, as you're about to see, combines both academics and practitioners, or uh, those who have done both, like Paul himself, and they are all specialists in machine learning. Um, the other thing that you benefit from in terms of lifelong learning is what if you're enrolled onto this program, you have access to all future MLI programs, and they won't be repeated versions of the program that begins next month. This, this was a program that was six months in duration uh, at its inception a few, a few years ago. But because of the continual um, uh, uh, change in the marketplace, especially when it comes to technological changes, we have to keep adding to this. So it has become now an eight month program because we review the syllabus all the time and we're always adding whatever is the new topical area that that uh, people need to know about uh, to the syllabus and by the same token anything that becomes um, somewhat irrelevant we remove from the program um, so you know we keep this as topical and relevant as possible and this program you know it may become a 10-month program in five years time or or a one year program in, in, in several years time, and you will have access to all of those programs as well for the rest of your career. You'll also have access to additional webinars that we run, um, which we do run regularly, and you have access to networking events that we run all over the world. So we ran, for example, in January, uh, networking events in the Americas, uh, in Africa, in Europe, in the UK. So it, it's, um, it's really a community that uh, is involved. It's not just people going through the program and the people who attend these networking events, um, we make it our intention that it isn't just MLI alumni, it's anybody. So anyone involved in this, in this space who uh, wants to attend networking events so that they can socialize and mingle with like-minded thinkers, if you like, uh, and working professionals, they're more than welcome to do so. Uh, has this course been run before? Yes, 
several times. So it's it's a few years in the running, uh, Tusha. Um, this isn't uh, brand new. And I, I was explaining before that the brand as a result um, of the, the faculty on the programme and as a result of the practical application of the programme, the brand has become international. Um, so there, there are literally people from all over the world who um, who uh, enrol onto this programme. And I'll come on to the profile of, of those who enrol uh, in a second. So we are accredited, CPD, CPD certified, um, and for something in the region of 300 hours, um, uh, I may be wrong on that, if not, if not more, actually. Um, and you'll recognize these names, NTT Data uh, is um, one of our very important partnerships. Um, uh, NAG, you all know about the NAG library, so we've got a very close association with them. Felesians that, of course, Paul, um, this was Paul's brainchild, if you like, his, uh, um, he created this extraordinary group that uh, run incredible events, um, uh, technologically orientated events. So those are our, uh, the MLI accreditation and partnerships. Who is involved in the faculty? Paul heads up the faculty. And his assistant, his able assistant, uh, an incredible guy called Ivan Zdankin, um, who is also um, one of the most eloquent lecturers I've come across. And under them, we've got these names here. Francesca Lazzari, a lot of you will have heard of. She's um, a big star in, in, in this world. She works for Microsoft, uh, very well known, writes lots of... Um, articles and uh, um, um, has very strong views in this area. Matthew Dixon is the current uh, quant of the year. Um, Blanca Horvath was in 2020 voted rising star in quant finance. She's no longer a rising star. She is genuinely a, a massive star in her own right. She's an extraordinary person uh, as well. Um, Cla Claudia Albanese, Said Ahmed. These are these are all very well known names, um, and there's a reason why, or there are reasons why they've chosen to teach on the MLI program. It's not only because of um, you know the, the the some of the other faculty members on the program, but it's primarily because what they're very conscious of is that the outcomes. Uh, of this program are incredible. You, but by that I mean that um, for those who go through the entire program, they come out the other side with um, a skill set that they are able to use in the workplace. And this is what the likes of Matthew Dixon and Blanca Horvath were extremely impressed by. And they have chosen this program above others um, primarily because it's incredibly useful and they want more and more and more people in this world to have uh, the right skill set for such an important domain, um, which is machine learning. And it's obviously going to become bigger and bigger and bigger. So you are taught by the world's leading experts. Um, Paul is very much in that category uh, himself as well. So you're in very, very good hands. This is the profile of, of um, people who go through the program. Um, uh, it used to be very kind of UK and Europe centric, not anymore. There are people from all over the world now enrolling onto this program um, uh, from over 60 countries worldwide. And these are the profiles. This is really critical because um, if you don't fit into one of these profiles, then we would need to speak to you uh, after submitting your application in order to determine whether or not you're suitable um, for the programme. And I'm going to read these out because that's how important I think they are um, for, for you to work out whether or not you're suitable for the programme. So the people who enrol are quantitative analysts, IT specialists, quant traders, those working in insurance, in model validation, risk managers, equity traders, or high frequency traders. If you're outside of those categories, um, insofar as what you're doing professionally is concerned, 
um, then there may be a, a, a chance that you're not admitted onto the programme. Similarly, academic profiles, computing, maths, physics, banking and finance and engineering. Um, again, if you're out, so maybe economics potentially could be um, added to that list, but not really. Uh, you know, the, the last thing that we want is is for people to is for you to enroll onto the program only to find that things just uh, go over your head and that you're not able to follow um, a lot of the concepts being taught on the program. And it's partly our responsibility to ensure that doesn't happen. Um, these are some of the organisations uh, that enrol employees onto the program. Um, do any of the faculty have an energy trading background, ideally application in power trading? Paul? Sorry, let me give you the question. So this was uh, from Jan, privately to me. Um, uh, are any of are any of the any of the faculty have an energy trading background? Ideally, application in power trading. I have background in trading on power trading. Or generally, energy trading as well. <clears throat> Uh, Said has done some. I was going to say, yeah. It's also done some currency trading. I don't think that any. Actually, I think Matthew also has background in currencies. Paul, it's very hard to hear to hear you. It's not very clear. What I'm saying is that Said has some background in commodity and currency trading. Matthew has some background in commodity trading. I can't remember if anyone has specifically background in energy trading or like things like electricity trading. I don't know, actually. I know commodity trading, yes. I also know, yeah, commodity futures trading, yes. I don't think anyone else has done uh, sort of energy trading as far as I, as far as I remember. Yeah, and if, if you could, um, again, privately, um, if you want, set, uh, give me your email address. And then I'll send you an email to confirm whether or not we have anyone on the faculty who has a background in energy trading. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so, 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 as, as I was saying, these are some of the organizations um, that enroll people onto the program. There are more, um, a lot more than this, some of whom were not uh, permitted to name on this presentation. Um, but there are plenty others uh, um, that, that put their, their delegates through the program. So what exactly is the journey? Well, it, it, it does start today. In some cases, it starts before today. If you, if you uh, were able to go through the brochure, um, but otherwise it starts today. And, and, and today is where we're going to talk about the, the syllabus. We'll break down the syllabus in detail. This session is also um, being recorded, so if any of you want to go through the recording again to, you know, make sure it's it's a big decision. So I think it's worth uh, going through the recording again if if uh, if you need to. Um, if you then decide to enrol, um, then you apply uh, on either online or send me an email, and I'll send you uh, a registration form. It's a very short form. We wanted to keep this as simple as we possibly could. Uh, the admissions team then get back to you within three working days. Actually, now with uh, less than a month to go to the start of the program, it's usually within one working day that they will get back to you. Uh, you then do the MLI primers, of which there are five that um, Paul will take you through shortly. You receive the course materials uh, before the start of the program, and then you begin the program proper. Um, eight modules of varying length, on average one month each, but they do vary quite a lot, actually. Um, and uh, you get online tests at the end of each module, final unseen written exam at the end of module eight. 
Um, and then the icing on the cake is the final project where you, you implement everything you've learned on the program um, uh, for real, um, as though you are actually working. And you'll be implementing things loads during the course of these eight months anyway. Um, you know, th this is all about implementation. So you'll be gaining confidence the more you, you progress through uh, these eight modules. OK, I think this is a good time to hand you over to Paul and he'll talk about the program delivery and then uh, we'll, we'll take you through the syllabus. Thank you very much, Jeff. So uh, just looking at the pro program delivery, um, the program consists of live lectures, which you can either attend in person in London or because some of our lectures are located globally. Uh, you can also uh, attend those lectures remotely uh, because uh, our lectures may be located in uh, various uh, places uh, around the world. Uh, so some of these lectures, well, actually all of these lectures are then recorded so you can view the recordings on the uh, education website. So you don't necessarily have to um, go to every single lecture at the time if you have clashes. So you can actually watch the recorded lecture. There is a sequence of assignments that allow you to gain practical skills uh, in uh, these techniques. All of the lectures are built on real world exercises and case studies. And in addition to the content that we provide as part of the course, we now and then organize ad hoc webinars that you're welcome to attend and to look at some of the uh, novel aspects of um, machine learning and artificial intelligence, some of the new stuff, uh, which may not necessarily be covered in the syllabus of the course. So we are um, keenly aware of what's happening in this field and we organize uh, many webinars that cover the latest topics uh, in the field. We start with primers, so we start with a number of um, uh, longer courses rather than just short lectures. We have a number of longer courses that cover foundations that you require to know in order to be able to deal with uh, the content of the course. So we start with an introduction to the mathematics of the course, which uh, looks at some of the mathematical prerequisites, calculus, linear algebra, and so on. I just want to make it clear that we don't necessarily want you to become uh, mathematicians. We want you to become practitioners. So, I mean, it's important to understand the mathematics if you want to develop new machine learning techniques, but uh, the emphasis of the course is just knowing just enough to be able to actually do stuff with, the, with, <laughs> with these techniques. Many of the applications in this course are focused on either financial derivatives and or risk. So we have a primer on that as well on financial derivatives and risk. So we understand how financial derivatives work. We look at options and other derivatives. We look at how to price them using some of the standard models um, and how to use software such as Quantlib to price options. And then we also look at various ways of modeling risk, including value at risk and expected shortfall. So these are kind of the foundations of uh, risk management that you encounter in uh, finance. There is another uh, an, an entire branch of applications that you encounter in finance, which is called algorithmic trading. So we actually introduce you to algorithmic trading. We look at how to deal with strategies based on bars, such as uh, OHLCV data. And we also look at the microstructure of financial markets, dynamic portfolio management, optimal execution, and a bit at uh, cryptocurrency trading. There is uh, another primer, which is Python for data science and AI. So we'll look at how Python can be used. Programming is very important for these applications. So we have a primer on how to use Python in these cases. And then we look at advanced Python techniques. So over and above the basic techniques that we encountered in the first primer, we'll look at how to take this further, how to how to use adv advanced Python to um, uh, to do more, more serious stuff with, uh, with uh, Python and uh, how to basically do more optimal things uh, with Python. So how to optimize your code, how to speed it up, that kind of stuff. So that's something that we look at as part of the advanced Python techniques. Then uh, we actually get into the main course. We have uh, weekly lectures on supervised learning. Uh, we start with supervised learning. Before I go into specific lectures, maybe let me perhaps give you an overview of what this course is about. We have Supervised learning, we start with that. Then we'll look at deep learning, specifically neural nets. And we have four lectures on neural nets. 
Then we look at unsupervised learning. This is how do you uncover the hidden structure of your data set as well as alternative data, which is a big and very topical area nowadays. Then we look at practitioners approach. How do you actually run this on software? How do you run this reliably in the cloud? How do you automate uh, machine learning processes? Then we look at reinforcement learning, which was extremely topical over the past decade, especially when uh, machine learning algorithms outperformed the first human champion at the game of Go. And then we look at into time series because the bulk of the data that you encounter in uh, financial machine learning is uh, around time series. So we we do have a module which is focusing on time series. Very topical nowadays with the release of ChatGPT um, for just yet another very scary thing that is happening in this world where you actually have AI that you can talk to, um, perhaps uh, not much more meaningfully than when you talk to humans, but uh, still you can talk to this AI and obtain some kind of interesting responses from it. I'm just trying to adjust my camera so you guys can uh, see me properly. So anyway, so these are probably two of the most, uh, yes, ChatGPT4 can do your coding assignments, which is quite worrying, right? Uh, but it does make mistakes and uh, it's not super reliable. So you do need to do a bit of translating from what ChatGPT4 actually does for you. I mean, it can do a lot more, right? It can work with images, it can generate stuff. It's uh, quite a uh, quite a worrying, re quite a worrying tool, really. <laughs> but it's quite powerful, and you can, for example, use it to even I don't know, analyze uh, legal contracts, right? You can give it a legal contract, and it will find loopholes in that uh, legal contract. It can do quite a lot of stuff for you, right? So ChatGPT four can indeed do a lot of stuff. ChatGPT4 is based on these ideas. It's based on natural language processing and transformers, as well as generative deep learning, which we consider as part of this module seven. And then module eight is perhaps the uh, future of AI uh, and machine learning, not just in finance, but more generally. So we'll look in module eight at quantum machine learning, uh, variational circuits and stuff like that. And, um, and this is, um, uh, this is what we basically encounter in module eight. So let me just go back and maybe look at the individual lectures and maybe point out some of the more um, specific um, elements here. Again, we start with linear regression because linear regression is, you know, some people may not even call it a machine learning technique, but it's probably the most important technique in finance. Um, and there are many subtleties in using it. So we actually start at, by looking at these subtleties. Ensemble methods, again, currently probably the leading methods for tabular data, such as boosting. So we actually consider those methods in ensemble methods uh, lecture. Again, uh, most of the algorithms in Kaggle currently outperform others. So they rely on things like boosting and so on. Kernel methods are very important, both um, from the point of view of uh, theory, but also they're very important in the quantum machine learning context. So that's one reason why we consider kernel methods here. Bayesian modeling basically opens up an entire section of algorithms that you can employ uh, in various situations. So we, uh, we introduce Bayesian modeling to enable you to use those algorithms and to introduce it to this way of thinking. Deep learning, again, neural nets in general. So we start by introducing neural nets. We look at how to train neural nets and then how they're applied in banking and finance. Blanca Horvath, who is one of the innovators in this area, will introduce her deep learning volatility model in lecture eight. So you will actually listen to uh, descriptions of these mo mo models from people who actually develop them. So this is uh, one of the key features of this course. You don't necessarily get that uh, in many other courses. Um, you may not necessarily hear from people who develop this specific model on how, um, you know, how that model was developed. So you can actually ask a lot of meaningful questions uh, you can ask the person who developed those models, a lot of uh, meaningful questions. Um, unsupervised learning, again, your staple algorithms such as PCA, we consider them in this module, but also alternative data, because nowadays finance is not just about processing um, tabular data, it's also about using other kinds of data, such as, for example, satellite images or internet logs and so on. And this is what, again, the person who actually did a lot of development in this work, Saeed Amman, will give you the lecture on alternative data. He's also the author of one of, I think, only two books and certainly the first book on alternative data. So um, he will be able to introduce you to that. Then we have the practitioner's approach, and this is where you have, again, differential machine learning 
um, taught by the inventors of uh, differential machine learning, Savine and uh, Huge, so they will introduce you to differential machine learning. And um, again, a lot of practical stuff, you know, how to make your data science workflows reproducible, how to deploy them, what kind of hardware do you need to run this? And again, hardware for, of machine learning will be delivered by people from NVIDIA who really understand this stuff because they actually make this hardware, they make the GPUs that they use to uh, run these machine learning models. Then again, reinforcement learning, very topical. So we look at financial applications of reinforcement learning. So uh, I think this will be very interesting to you guys. It was probably the thing in artificial intelligence before this year when ChatGPT and natural language processing became so extremely popular. And uh, time series will be taught by Francesco Lazzari, who is an expert in time series modeling at Microsoft. So. Uh, this, um, I think, will be uh, really, really, uh, really useful for you guys because, um, again, we'll be looking at, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, basically from people who actually develop these models and uh, introduce them. There is a book and time series, and uh, Francesca wrote that book. Again, not classical time series modeling, not classical econometrics, but using machine learning for time series modeling. <clears throat> again, I did talk a lot about uh this uh module again probably going to be the one of the most interesting modules for you um data driven market simulator the, this is an, a financial application how do you deal with environments that contain relatively little data and blanka Horvath again who is one of the developers of these techniques will uh introduce you to that lecture um quantum machine learning is taught by anton jacquier who wrote pretty much one of the small handful of textbooks that exist on this subject. I think that this is it from me uh, as uh, far as content is concerned. I hope this is a useful introduction uh, to the content of the course. Super, thanks very much, Paul. Um, fantastic. Um, okay, so uh, uh, alumni are all, obviously a very important part of our program, and if you wanna get in touch, uh, with alumni either from your region or, or your organization or you know those who are working in in uh, similar roles to the one that you're working in then you're more than welcome just send me an email um, and I will put you in touch I'll get in touch with them ask uh, if uh, they're okay to be to be contacted by you they'll probably say yes and then we can get you in touch um, the study partner program is really important because for those of you who enjoy studying um, with colleagues, for example, so you can choose to study with somebody from from your organization if they're enrolled or somebody from your region uh, or somebody who works in a similar role. And um, uh, it's an incredibly effective way to go through the program. It is it is quite an intense program. It's eight months long. Uh, you know, most of you have full time jobs uh, and families to look after um, and you need to fit this in. Um, talking of which, one of the things that we do is prior to you starting the program, um, we will help you to. Um, to kind of uh, to to, to um, put out a, a, a timetable of. Um, of when you're able to uh, attend the lectures or when you'll need to watch the recordings of the lectures and when you've got time for self-study as well. Um, because the more self-study you do on top of the lectures, um, the more practice, the, the, the better you'll become uh, as a machine learning expert. There's, uh, somebody has asked a question here. From Pooja. Hi, Pooja. Uh, how much well versed one has to be with Python to join this program? Will the course cover some programming sessions as well? Paul? How well versed, right? Okay. Uh, how well versed um, in Python to join this program? Well, we start by teaching you Python from scratch, right? So it's good to be well versed in Python, but we will have a primer that will teach you. Uh, Python from its very foundations. And will the course cover some programming sessions as well? 
Yeah, I would like to say that there is a sister program, which is Quantitative Developer Certificate, which focuses specifically on programming and development uh, and software engineering. Uh, so here we actually start by introducing you to Python during the primers, and then you learn part Python incrementally as you go along. But I mean, this is not like so much a coding course. We will give you enough information to start coding Python from scratch. But if you want to become an expert in, in Python, you can join join our sister program called Quantitative Developer Certificate. Um, you will learn a lot more about Python. It's very different. Um, the, the, the QDC, we call it Quantitative Developer, Developer Certificate, is very much focused on coding and programming. Um, we're, we're running information sessions next week, one information session next week. Uh, on the QDC. So, Pooja, if you want to attend that, you're more than welcome, uh, as is everybody else. But, but it's very different from the MLI. Paul, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, the primers that you mentioned, those will be self learning or they, that will also be uh, like taught over classes? It'll be taught, taught classes as well. So, there are lectures every week um, for eight months, it's one or two lectures per week. And the faculty for those classes are uh, basically Paul and Ivan Zdankin. They head up the faculty, and th this is the remainder of the faculty. So this is primarily an instructor, an instructor-led course, but you will need to do um, work on your own as well uh, in terms of implementing what you've learned on, you know, on the lecture that happened yesterday, and and, and so on. Um, so that's something, you know, in, in terms of, um, uh, in terms of how much time you need to dedicate to this program each week, um, we would say an average of, let's say 10 to 12 hours a week, which includes lecture times. However, th this, this varies enormously from one individual to another, of course. Um, but the other thing is that like, like anything in life really the more you put into it the more you'll get out of it so um the, the the more time you're able to dedicate to this program during the course of the eight months you'll find but that your confidence in um implementing these techniques just grows and grows and grows so that by the end of the eight months you are an expert you will be an expert by that time um, and if you, if that means you put in more than 10 hours a week, great, you know, the more, the merrier. Um, some of you might already be, you know, incredibly talented in this space and may not need to put in that much. That's fine. But he, I would say even, even the extremely talented or experienced, um, people who enroll onto this program still put in the work anyway, uh, because you'll learn more, um, simple as that. So I, I hope that answers your question, Pooja, in, in, in terms uh, of... Yeah, yes, thanks, Chef. And I also have one another question. So you said there will be some classes in London as well. So how how is the usual uh, kind of schedule like? So we, uh, because I believe there will be people joining from different time zones. So will we have like kind of sessions? Is there any defined program on uh, how the sessions will be and how much will be on like physical sessions and online sessions so all, all of the sessions are physical and they are all in london as well um so where are you based uh in central london okay so they're at level 39 canary wharf uh, okay and they take place at i think all the classes take place at 6 p.m paul correct me if i'm wrong on that so 6 p.m uk time um which means yes that's know, correct i mean that's okay. 6 30. 6 30 is it varies by lecturer but i mean it's 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 usually around 6 or 6 30. okay fine so we're looking at you know for, for those of you who are for example resident in india then you're looking at 10 p.m or 10 30. so if you're not able to attend the lecture live you can uh, watch the recording of the lectures um it is a little bit more difficult for those in uh, in APAC, if you like, than it is for those in EMEA or in the Americas in terms of watching the lectures live. 
um, uh, because you know, especially in uh, in Singapore and Hong Kong, it, you're looking at uh, um, pretty much the early hours of the morning. Um, but if you're based in UK and Europe, then you're looking at six or six thirty UK time, seven seven thirty CET. Uh, New York is five hours behind, so you're looking at one one thirty PM uh, New York time. And then for those who are based in South America, in in uh, in Brazil and Chile, um, you're looking, it's at the moment four hours behind. Uh, so you're looking at 2 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, your time. And it's South usually uh, like alternate days in a week or uh, just, just what checking? Day, what, what day of the week, Paul, what days of the week usually? Well, the uh, lectures usually take place on Tuesdays at... Uh, uh, again at six or six thirty London time. So it's on, only once a week. Yeah. Only once a week. Okay. Okay. So Tuesdays at six or six thirty. I thought sometimes there were two lectures a week, but uh, I'm mistaken. Maybe that's the um, the quantitative development certificate or the uh, bank treasury risk program. Um, uh, Bank Treasury Risk Management Program. So this is one lecture a week, Pooja, uh, on Tuesdays. And I would imagine that this can change. I don't think this will be completely set uh, for Tuesdays. You know, it, it may change to other days depending on the availability of uh, uh, the schedule of the lecturers as well. So, so Jeff, when is the next batch expected to start? 18th of April. 18th of April. So if you did want to enroll, um, you can do so anytime between now and the 18th of, of April. We would recommend you enrolling uh, as soon as possible in order to have access to the MLI primers. Um, so um, you can get through the primers pretty quickly, but um, it's good to take your time over them as well. So um, you know, for those of you who, for example, are looking for sponsorship and you, let's say, are not able to get it until, you know, for argument's sake, the 17th of April, that's not a problem. You can still watch the recording of the lectures if you miss any of the opening lectures, first one or two lectures. I think there's two lectures this month, actually, um, after the 18th of April. So if you miss if you miss those, you can watch those recordings. Jeff, could you also share the fee structure and the sponsorships that you are checking? Do, does it has to be from the employer or do you also provide some assistance there? We so we've got um, at the moment, there's a 15 percent discount. If you submit your registration form this week, um, then you're entitled to a 15 percent discount. Um, Otherwise, I was referring specifically to companies who sponsor their employees through the program. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if you're sponsored, great. Um, uh, I don't know how many, in, you know, proportionally how many are sponsored and how many are self-funded. Maybe it's 50-50, something like that, because a lot of a lot of delegates are sponsored as well. Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise, we 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 don't give you um, extra help insofar as um, financing the program is concerned. You can pay in installments, okay? So you can, if you want, you can pay the full fee up front or you can pay in installments. Um, so hopefully that can help you out as well. It is an eight month program, so you can pay, you know, over that period as well. Um, Okay, so the MLI Employment Service is, um, I have to emphasize this, uh, this service is for self-funded applicants only. And the obvious reason why is because if you're sponsored by your company to go through the program, then, um, you know, we, we wouldn't really be, uh, integrity would not be on our side if we were to help you to join another organization. So whether you're fully sponsored or partially sponsored or 1% sponsored, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can't help you at all when it comes to our employment service. For those who are self-funded, the employment service is incredibly uh, comprehensive. It really is. Um, the contacts that we have in this space are huge. 
So our network of contacts is enormous globally. Um, not only because of MNI alumni, but also because of the faculty contacts, also the contacts that, that I personally have as well, um, having worked in this space since 2008. Um, uh, and recruitment is something I've done since 2008 in this space as well. Um, so we do have an enormous number of opportunities. Our objective is to get you interviews, because that's the tough part, is getting the interview. And that's our objective. So that's what we would try uh, our best to do is uh, to get you interviews. Once you've got the interview, um, then we do everything we can to help you get ahead of your um, potential competitors. Let's say there are five candidates being interviewed. Well, you need to be in a better place than uh, than the, the other four candidates. Um, the programme itself helps you to get ahead because they will probably give you um, a practical exercise or test to do. They will also be asking you questions uh, on machine learning. And so, you know, once you've gone through this program, you should be ahead of your candidates. But the other thing is you need to work harder than them. So you need to do your research. You need to not only look at the job spec, but you need to find out um, which team this role is in. You need to find out what the function of the team is, what the role of the team is, what, how does the team fit in within the organization as a whole? What, what are the organization's uh, objectives and what are their strategies to achieve those objectives? And you, you need to build a picture um, between the job spec that you receive and the organization as a whole and what your, how your role helps the organization. So th this is so important because, you know, even if you look on LinkedIn and you look for any machine learning roles, uh, uh, job roles on LinkedIn, some of them you've got well over 100 applications and it specifies how many, how many people have applied for each role. You'll see it's ridiculously competitive. So you need to get ahead of the game. You need to be ahead of the field and we'll help you to do that. Um, I think we know how to do that as well. So we can definitely hold your hand as far as that's concerned. And once you've done all your work prior to the, to the first interview and the second interview and so on, you'll have the right questions to ask because if you're curious, you'll know, you'll want to know more about the role. You'll want to know more about the, uh, the team that you're going to be working with. Um, and you'll want to know more about the organization. And then during the interview itself, having done all the research, you'll find as you're exchanging, uh, um, as you're communicating with them, um, you'll find questions pop up uh, just spontaneously. And you know, there you will get, uh, you should be ahead of the field um, in terms of the other candidates applying for the role. Of course, you can never tell. And it's, uh, you know, it can be a very personal choice between the people who are running the interviews and the candidates they're interviewing so you know th this is partly out of your hands but you can put a lot of it in your hands by doing the work and by reading up on uh, on their competitors as well really important if you can if you can tell them something about their competitors that they don't know about brilliant um there was one in, there was one uh, candidate that we had for um, a very senior IT role recently, um, based in Switzerland. And the first interview was with one of the desk heads. And um, he did so much work that he actually made a couple of recommendations to the desk head as to how he thought they could operate better as a team. So a couple of ideas uh, came to his mind and he explained it to them and he got the job in the end. As it happens, I mean, this isn't relevant, but his wife got a job at the same time in a different location. Uh, and so he, he chose in the end not, not to uh, take on the job and he was offered it. So he had four interviews. He was offered the job. They loved him. He loved them. And in the end, so these things can happen in recruitment, okay? So, you know, it's not all in your hands is what I'm saying, but put as much of it in your hand as you possibly can. So the, the MLI Employment Service really is um, exceptional. It's very comprehensive. Okay. Um, 
any questions on the syllabus in particular and any other questions uh, around the MLI um, as a whole. And if you want to unmute yourself, uh, yourselves, feel free. Because the, as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, it's nice to have a, a small group with us. Yesterday, it was a much uh, larger group for, for the information session yesterday, but this, this feels more uh, intimate, which is nice. So feel free to, um, to unmute yourselves and, and ask away. And if any questions pop up, incidentally, after the information session in the coming days and weeks, then you, you've got my contact details. So, you know, give me a call, ask me to call you back um, and or, or send me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll be as helpful as I possibly can with with those questions. But no questions now. Uh, I had a question. Sure. Yeah, so um, who's, so for the different courses, who's teaching? Is it just Paul teaching all the courses or are you doing some other instructor? No, so the people who, is this Pat, Patrick, are you talking? It, is it Patrick? It, it's not me. It's not you, apologies. Okay. Um, uh, these are the lectures. It's basically Paul and Ivan, as well as Francesca Lazeri, Matthew Dixon, Jack Jacquier, uh, Blanca Horvath, and so on. So I, I, I don't know if you um, if you were here, but you, you may have missed um, this part of the presentation. So the, the, these are uh, there's some world world renowned names here. Francesca Lazeri, a lot of you will know of. Matthew Dixon is the current Quant of the Year. Blanca Horvath is the, was voted rising star in quant finance in 2020. Um, and, uh, um, you know, uh, Said Ahmed is very famous, Claudia Albanese as well. So the, you'll, be, you'll be taught by all of these people during the course of the eight months. So are they teaching different courses or is it, is it true? They are, yeah. They specialize in different areas within machine learning. Um, uh, so you'll you'll see if you if you want, what I'll do is I can email you um, links to their LinkedIn profiles, which will give you an idea of their own fields of specialism. And it'll give you an idea of what parts of the program they teach on. Yeah. And my particular Do you want me to do that? It seems Paul's teaching all the courses and then that's an additional star that uh, Paul or what percentage what percentage of this program do you teach proportionally? What how much of this program do you teach? I don't know. I mean, well, let's look at uh, maybe let's if we go back, go back to the slides. Yep. Sure. Um, so for primers, I teach quite a few of the primers, but I don't always. I mean, sometimes there is a there is another lecture. I mean, like for for the primers, I just try to find the lecturer that is probably the best fit for that particular primer, right? So I sometimes I teach them. Sometimes somebody else teaches them because. A lot of the lecturers are actually familiar with the primers, right? So there is no need to be <clears throat> terribly specialized. Yeah. So here we have uh, Matthew Dixon, who is an expert in Bayesian modeling. Um, I teach some of this. I, I teach some of these lectures, I think. Um, but we also have Ivan teach, at, so Ivan, Matthew, and myself teach this module. So if we go to the next one, so this is Terry. Terry is teaching most of this because he's an expert specifically on neural networks. So and deep learning volatility is Blanca's work, right? So she's actually teaching that. So Okay, so when you say Terry, sorry, just to make Terry sure that we, we've got clarity here. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah. Terry and Blanca teach module two, module three. Um, I teach dimensionality reduction. Sometimes Ivan teaches it. Clustering yeah. algorithms, that's Ivan. Uh, alternative data is Said. Yeah. 
keep going. Um, hardware for machine learning is Jochen Papenbrock from NVIDIA. Yeah. Um, uh, differential machine learning is definitely taught by um, by the guys from Danske Bank, who invented yeah. it. Um, reinforcement learning is primarily taught by Ivan, but we also have some people who dis, uh, write specific papers. So, for example, an optimal order execution, so they present their work. Uh, if we go to the next one, uh, time series is for Francesco Lazzari. And if we go to the next one, uh, this is a combination of Olga Petrova, uh, Blanka Horvath. Um, yeah, if we go to the next one, this is uh, <clears throat> this is Antoine or Jacques uh, Jacquier, who is uh, an expert in quantum machine learning. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Okay, pleasure. Any other any other questions? Okay. All right. Well, look, it's it's been a, a, a real pleasure, and and um, I hope this has been informative because that's really our objective: is to provide you with as much information as possible on this program, uh, on the usefulness of, of the program, and so on. So. Um, I hope this this has been useful for you and informative. And if you do have any other questions, if you need any further information on the program, um, feel free to get in touch with me whenever you want. My email address is there. Uh, you have my my uh, phone number as well um, uh, in my uh, email signature. And um, thank you very much for for coming along for this information session. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Take care and do it.